we just drove past this right this area here and there was a squirrel alarm calling we stopped Seb turned round and there's a leopard in the grass here we drove not we drove past him by I mean we can't be more than two meters from him Can you see him He seems to be very shy. He just popped his head up, or she popped her head up. I don't know who this is. I'm, Seb, let me just try and gain some height by going up onto the, the bank here. There, there we go. <laughs> How many leopards have we driven past? Oh, this looks like a shy animal. It lifted its head up and then put it straight down again on its own. I'm going to take a flyer here and look at the size of the ears and say this might be young Tumba. And Kirsten reckons it's Hosanna. It could be. I, I don't know. I mean, I just don't know why he would be shy. You know what? He might not be shy at all. It might just be that he's put his head down to go back to sleep. I think he's pissed off because that squirrel is shouting at him. Mm. He's very irritated that the, <laughs> that the squirrel is shouting at him. He does have, you know what? He's got a nick in his ear there, which I think Hosanna does have, but I thought it was in Hosanna's right ear. There we go, getting a little bit more confident. It's too big for Tumba. It's too big for Tumba. I think. He's got a notch on his He does have that notch, hey. Uh, who's got that notch? Well, uh, hosanna has got a notch in one of his ears, okay. but this one's got a notch in both in ears. In both ears, yes. So it's definitely not Tumba. Max Smith reckons this is Hosanna. How oh, very, very lucky we were. Thank you, Mr. Squirrel. Now, I'll just tell you that when we stopped at the squirrel, Seb said he's looking behind us. I said, I think he's looking straight down. And I looked at him with my binoculars and realized that I couldn't tell where he was looking other than sort of a field of 180 degrees or so in front of him. Actually going to show them the squirrel, okay. Okay, and Seb's just going to show you where the squirrel is. And as I was about... Oh, no, Ladybug daisies, you reckon this is Vutomi? Sorry everyone, I can't, it's, uh, You can't no, see the squirrel. Can't, no. Ladybug daisies, it is almost certainly not Vutomi. This is a very long way away from where Vutomi lives. We're at Treehouse Dam. My initial instinct when I saw it was young male because it just popped its head up, but I'm not convinced of that. It just doesn't, it looks shy, you know, they don't. Yeah. Unless it's just one of our extremely habituated leopards that really just doesn't give a continental about vehicles. And the only reason we saw it, of course, because it stuck its head up. As Seb was looking behind. Very lucky, otherwise I wouldn't have seen him. Eh? I mean, we drove past him. And drove past him, what, two meters away? Oh, very exciting. Well, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll just... No, will we? And sit here a little bit longer, just see if the head doesn't pop up. Otherwise, we'll try and go around the other angle and get a slightly better look. But I just wonder if this position of ours actually above him is not going to be the best option. Now, the other thing to note about that squirrel is that it has exceptional eyesight. And 
they see a long way and so you can find a squirrel alarm calling and still find nothing. And of course as soon as you then get out of the car to look around it becomes it becomes very difficult because if you get out of a car and start tracking around where a squirrel is <laughs> what happens is it starts looking at you. Sandy, you're on uh, Team McLennan Smith, and you say that this is Hosanna. I didn't think that Hosanna had nicks in both of his ears. I knew he had one in one of them. But it's certainly not impossible. You got the squirrel. We're just going to show you the squirrel quickly. And you can just see his tail. And he's not getting the slightest bit bored shouting at this leopard, warning everyone that he is around. But I wonder if we shouldn't just reverse back a little bit. The leopard's head is now down, fast asleep. Yeah, this is not a shy leopard, it's just a leopard that is so habituated it doesn't care. Heads up. James Richard, I'm not sure it's not Tundi, it could easily be Tundi. There, we've got a face. Sort of. Yeah, no. You got it. This is very, very cryptic, isn't it? <laughs> well, I'm afraid. There are some who could identify the leopard by its spots from here, but I'm not one of those people. James Richard, I think the ears are certainly moth-eaten enough for it to be tundy. Not sure where her little boy would be if this was her. Tandy is a 3-3 three, three leopardess, so we'd see three spots left and right. She's very relaxed now, or he was very relaxed, so let's just move slightly around and see if we can't get a view through, through the shorter grass. Did it very slowly. Seb, I'm going to ask you to swing round to the other side now. Okay, this way. Nice and slow movements because we are very, very close now. There we go. That's a young male. That's not a female. That's not a very young male either. That's Tingana. <laughs> That's Tingana. Well, oh, hello. Right, let me pull that in. That is wonderful. <laughs> Taxon or Lex come in. Taxon, I found your friend Tingana. He's at Treehouse Dam. No, he's very flat in some very long grass. Oh, he's moving. <laughs> yeah, he's just got up now, Tex. He's moving towards the water. 
I cannot believe that this leopard's come over here. <laughs> People checked and checked and checked again the Mulwachi to see whether he'd crossed or not. And clearly he had, and somehow we missed him. And this is not, I mean, these are highly skilled people who were checking. I didn't for one second. I, well, maybe I did, I don't know. But I really thought it was highly unlikely that we were going to find Tingana here. How oh, very nice. And Lady Starfire, you're looking at Tingana and wondering about the dewlap flap that goes from under his chin <clears throat> all the way onto the skin of his chest, and whether that is a function purely of Tingana or if it is a function of all male leopards. Uh, I think he's probably unusually uh, sort of elongated, but I think it, you'll find. It does happen on many male leopards. Now I must just reiterate, we've been giving a lot of figures about weights on masses of, of leopard. And I've been redoing my research on this, you know, on actual leopards that have been weighed. So not people that have estimated or guessed about leopards and that sort of thing. And I reckon that this chap is about 75 kilograms or so. And that is about 160 pounds. Oh, he's going to go down perhaps and have a drink. So, although he is a good sized male leopard, um, maybe slightly bigger than average. Well, he's not the most monstrous one I've ever seen, but he is. He's, uh, I also don't think the most, you know, we keep talking about 90, maybe up to 100 kilograms for big male leopard, that would be outlandishly huge. <laughs> um, you say, do cats, Chris, you want to know if cats ever get irritated with vehicles following them? Yes, they do from time to time, but they will give us a sign. For example, Tundi uh, and Shadow both will hiss at the vehicles if they get irritated. I've seen Shongila doing the same thing. He is not in the slightest bit irritated. I think he's going to go and find some shade and lurk there. Whoops, a daisy. There's quite a few holes in this area. just goes to show you cannot start shouting about identifying leopards until you've seen the whole face. <laughs> this is beautiful. Okay, we'll see where he goes. He's got this nice big jackalberry tree that he sometimes goes and rests in up here. While we do that, Tristan has got a member of the Hemiptera to show you. Well. Ah yes, time for a bath. Gentlemen of his eminence must maintain his outfit, you know, we couldn't have him walking around here in a tatty, tatty jacket. <laughs> it's amazing how what looks like a sort of brutally powerful animal becomes a pussy cat when you see him starting to clean himself. <laughs> Ali, as uh, you can see, the leopard looked up as he heard your question and uh, clearly the answer is no. You could see that from the look he gave you. It, was a, it only can be described as a dirty look. Ali, leopards don't hide out in trees, no. 
They do sometimes rest in trees. Normally they'll be in trees if they've got meat in trees. So if they've got a kill nearby or in the tree, then they will rest in the trees. But they will very seldom, or well, not very seldom, but they spend more time on the ground than they do in trees. And because resting in a tree is not necessarily comfortable for a leopard, and so Yes, if there's a very wide branch that's easy to sleep on, sometimes leopards will rest in trees. But it's more comfortable for him to rest there, where he is on the ground, in amongst the shade and the soft green grass, than it is for him to have a spiky bark sticking into bits and pieces of his sensitive undercarriage. So yes, they will sleep in trees if they feel threatened, but normally they will be on the ground. Roshni, you say has Tingana always been shy? I don't think he's shy now at all. I think he's very confiding. Perhaps you're asking because his name means shy. Tingana apparently means shy. And Roshni, I think he probably was when he started out here. But, you know, he's just habituated to the vehicles. He's got so very familiar with them. And he's not in the slightest bit shy now. I think he was almost probably slightly disappointed to be spotted earlier on. He he looked kind of, um, if not not alarmed, but kind of, oh, you know, Seb spotted him. He sort of looked distressed that he had managed to, or not managed to remain hidden. But he's not shy. He goes around his business completely oblivious to us these days. Gosh, it's getting quite warm out here, isn't it, Seb? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Leo, you're going to get yourself in trouble here with the with the Twitterverse. You say is it normal for male leopards to be cannibals, or is just this one that's a cannibal? As I've said that now. You will find people, a great wailing and gnashing of teeth going up around our viewership. And <laughs> I'll just explain where Leo's question come from, comes from. Tingana killed and ate a leopardess called Shiluva the other day. About, what was it, probably about four months ago, I guess. And the explanation for why he did that is very difficult to come by. But you, your question is, is he the only cannibalistic leopard around? No, he's not. It often happens that males will kill cubs that are not their own and eat them. Um, I've not heard of it happening where a female is killed and eaten by a male. Uh, well, I've, you know, not in my immediate vicinity. I've certainly heard of it happening before. <coughs> so you will find that there are many male leopards that tend to cannibalism from time to time. I remember the sense of disbelief that ensued after the incident was reported. Nobody believed it could be Tingana. He wouldn't do such a dastardly thing until photographic evidence emerged of the crime being committed. And then, you know, people just had to come to terms with the fact that Tingana is an entirely normal male leopard. Now, there are two other interesting things I want to show you while that cat is fast asleep. Um, would you mind coming over this way, Seb? On the edge of the light here is a... On the edge of the light. The light, this light. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is this yeah. insect that Seb, not Seb, that uh, Tristan found the other day, and then I found one yesterday with Seb on foot. There it is. And I didn't know what it was, and I'm still not sure what it is. 